welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome back to another exciting installment of the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Before you, you have two different sets of ratchets. Now normally, when we've done these videos, I've had two examples of the same exact sets just for ease of presentation or I've had similar iterations within the same family now these were marketed as two separate ratchet sets but I pair them together because as I have talked about in the quick release ratchet video within the timeline of the mechanism system these two sets while they do have obvious differences both on the outside and on the in the mechanism that's the key that I'm focusing on is in the mechanism and they represent a very similar philosophy with one another so much so that I feel comfortable grouping them together and calling these two despite their individual Sears assigned or common names amongst the communities as the second generation raised panel ratchets now that's just talking about how they function internally we can go ahead and dissect these together in the teardown videos I'll do each one separately but what I will do for ease and understanding is I'm actually going to have Gen 1 through 4 together and we'll, we'll dissect them and you can see the obvious differences between the four uh, but these will receive their own corresponding teardowns and discussions so right here on the right hand side we have what were known by Sears as the butterfly selector or butterfly style ratchet on the left hand side well thanks again Sears for not assigning these a proper name <laughs> they're just ratchet wrench hooray not very helpful at all thanks a lot Sears so it makes things a bit of a pain in the ass <laughs> because for me I have to try to figure out well where do these all fit within the timeline and thankfully that information has been provided through my sources mainly the Sears catalog but if I can't find a name assigned by Sears then I go to the common whether it's the do-it-yourself community or the professional community what do they generally call this and for the guys on the left it's a bit of a mixed bag because some folks call it the long lever ratchet which is great and dandy but the quick release or what I've called the third generation raised panel this too has been called the long lever so it makes things a little confusing for simplicity we're just going to call this, like I've said before, the quick release. And we'll just call this the, these the long lever. They're slightly longer in length for the selector versus the ratchet I just showed. So that's what we're going to go with. So we've got butterfly selector ratchet set, commonly known as the Flying V. These were made in the 50s, so everything seemed to have a fin back then and then we'll call these the long lever ratchets so again Sears doesn't make naming conventions any easier by not really helping out with that <laughs> and with the confusion amongst the community it, uh, I've done forum posts specifically talking about these long lever ratchets on the right and I, I've unfortunately had some mixed responses in regards to to uh, that 
particular nomenclature because people, <laughs> some people were very receptive and grateful for the fact that somebody's pegging this down and some people were thinking, well shoot, while you're, while you're renaming my ratchets, why don't you rename my dog? Yeah, I, I did get that response <laughs> from somebody. So, let's just go ahead and dive into this and get cracking. So I've already mentioned that the mechanism internally, while there are differences between these, fundamentally it represents the same pathway within the evolution of the raised panel ratchet series. So starting with these guys on the left, the long levers, these were first introduced in the Sears catalog in 1957. So they were brand new for then. We'll start with a quarter inch for price. Quarter inch started at $2.75, 3 eighths at $3.79, half inch at $5.50. These, in terms of individual sale within the Sears catalog, had an extremely short shelf life. Final year, 1958. So, 1957, one year later, brr, that's it. We're done. Quarter inch was sold for $2.56. Three eighths at $3.82. So a little bit of a price jump just a little. Half inch at $4.89 so quarter inch and half inch a bit of a price jump this one having the greatest drop and this one just having a slight increase and that's not uncommon for Sears to do that especially when they're discontinuing products as it is there's usually a, a, a slight discount for the consumer and it's for liquidation purposes. As far as the butterfly selector ratchets. These were first introduced in 1959. We've got quarter inch at $3.39, three-eighths at $4.39, and half inch at $5.98. As far as this trio is concerned, they were last offered for individual sale in 1966. So they had a several year run, fairly decent, which was a, a positive trend for Craftsman branded ratchets in the Sears catalog because as we move backwards in the timeline, things are gonna get a little sketch in terms of longevity of certain ratchets. We will see some ratchets that are offered for one year. That's it. We'll see some that are offered for just a handful of years and, and that's pretty typical so for these to have about a seven year run that's pretty good so 1966 final price for quarter inches three dollars and eighteen cents three eighths at three dollars and ninety three cents and half inch at five dollars and nineteen cents so these butterfly selector ratchets have had a a several year run, Sears again lowering the price a little bit for the consumer just to liquidate the product and that's like I said not uncommon for them to do that. It becomes less uncommon as we move forward in the timeline and if you've watched any of those videos you'll you'll notice that. So inflation wasn't whacking you too hard and there was a bit of a reward for the consumer as time went on. And much like I said in the third generation raised panel ratchet, aka the quick release video, uh, within, with those ratchets, the price almost logarithmically continued to increase despite the fact that they were offering slightly fewer features and they had long mastered the product, which realistically as any company masters the production of their product it should become slightly cheaper for them to produce so so the butterfly selector ratchets unlike these had more than just the standard three sizes to offer 
Unfortunately for the long lever, nada. What you see is all there was. For the butterfly, much like the quick release ratchet that came after it, you have more options, which is awesome. This is the first iteration through the Craftsman brand name to have a ratchet with the flex head. And this is the 3 8 size. And this one is mint. Take a look at it. I'm very fortunate to have this one. The selector is in amazing condition. And overall the ratchet's in amazing condition. I'm just taking a look at this as well as the ratchets before you. You'll notice, contrary to the videos that we've watched before, there were part numbers. Nothing. For these ratchets, for the butterfly selector, for the long lever, and those after, you will never find a part number stamped anywhere on the ratchet. So they just assumed, you need a ratchet? Well, this is what we've got for now. Here you go. <laughs> you need a warranty replacement? Here you go. Here's the newest one. So we've got the 3 8 flex head, sporting the, the common degrees of movement. Nothing really unique there. We'll just set that guy right here. 3 8 flex head was new in 1959 with the initial release of the Butterfly Selector Ratchets for $4.00 and 98 cents and they were last offered in 1966 along with the last offering of the individual sales for these particular ratchets 3 eighths flex head 1966 was $4.86 cents. so a, a, a very small savings right there for the consumer now uniquely so we know that with the quick release ratchets we had 3 eighths flex, half inch flex, we've got the 15 inch long breaker bar ratchet. You got those with this series 2. The kicker was is that you didn't get the half inch breaker bar, or I should say the half inch flex head until 1965. So we've got about one year left in this series before they thought hmm we should offer <laughs> a half inch flex but nonetheless we got it it was half inch flex was seven dollars and fifty nine cents in 1965 and in 1966 the date of the final offering it was seven dollars and four cents and this one also despite some some small use marks is in amazing condition and the selector is also in excellent condition which ooh, we got a little bit of grease there so part of my objective with this ratchet series as I've mentioned several times now is to find the best possible condition pieces because for some of these while I could find destroyed variants quite easily it is significantly more challenging for me to find pieces that would have been representative of these ratchets Ooh, excuse me when they were new I mean let's face it these are well over 50 years old the butterfly selectors these as well, the long lever. So, you know, it's, it's almost as if someone had to buy these tools with the intention of using them and regrettably for whatever reason their, their home repair, or automotive repair dreams didn't exactly pan out and they just sat in a toolbox in the right conditions. Particularly not by the sea <laughs> or the Midwest where it can get pretty humid. So 
Uh, I, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for the fact that I've been able to find some of these in as excellent condition as I have been. In conjunction with our butterfly offerings, we have, like I mentioned, the half inch, 15 inch long breaker bar ratchet. Now regrettably this is not in as great of condition as I would have hoped it would have been. But while these aren't necessarily supremely rare, they are a little bit harder to get a hold of. They don't command a significant dollar value or anything like that, but as you can see there is some wear here. I even have a... I tried to make it a policy for this video series where I wouldn't buy anything that had an engraving on it, but this was the best of that I could do. And these pop up on eBay once every maybe every three, four, five months and the ones that I've seen are pretty roached. So this was the best condition one that I could find for a very approachable price. Because I don't want my wife to assassinate me. Because I love her and I'd like to continue to live. Keep living! So EWB whoever you are uh, you're immortalized in the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. We're happy to have your Butterfly Selector 15 inch long half inch breaker bar ratchet. Thank you very much. We hope you're still with us. So overall in, I'd say it's in good condition. It's not perfect versus the other brothers that it's going to be sat next to. I considered, I considered actually changing the selector on this one, but since uh, it's in state, I'll, I'll leave it as is. And it, it's actually a good example for me to do that as well. It'll help fortify a point of discussion that I'd hope to, to bring up in a little bit. Last but not least for the butterfly selectors. Actually, let me backpedal. Whoops. So the 15 inch long half inch drive breaker bar ratchet this was offered in 1959 so upon the initial release of the series for six dollars and ninety eight cents and final price in 1966 for six dollars and sixty four cents so sorry about that I almost forgot about your demographic information now okay here we go the three-eighths speeder ratchet Collectors like these. These go for a pretty significant sum of money. Of course, depended upon condition. This was donated to me. And so far as I can tell amongst looking at different forums and you know again there's always outliers for everything. You know, you may think you have the best condition something and somebody's had something in you know, in a Tupperware within some kind of subspace compartment that it never oxidized, you know what I mean? It's just, just kind of the way it always seems. So there's always somebody better than, you know, out there. But as far as I've been able to see from those people that share these on forums, from what I've been able to see at other online sources on eBay, those that I've seen physically in person from those that actually have these or collect them, this is the nicest one I've ever seen. Typically with these 3 8 speeder ratchets while this blue handle does have some very 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 minor wear this is usually the first thing to go this gets beat up it can get bent the chrome is all worn off here this is all ground up but I mean look at this thing this is I'd say almost mint condition and I'm very very happy to have it here so that you can see if you would have ordered this from the Sears catalog what you would have gotten assuming that Sears through Craftsman was had their A game on so the speeder ratchet was offered in 1960 for four dollars and ninety eight cents 
and was last offered in the catalog in 1963 for $4.59. So just a handful of years. This did come with some kits depending upon, or I shouldn't say kits, um, tool sets I should say, depending upon what you ordered. But the idea is, is that you could slap your socket on here and, you know, do that. You could put your hand here, torque it like that. Whatever you needed to do. You have to remember, folks, that this particular tool came from an era where fasteners may not have been in the most restrictive of environments. Uh, I remember my father, you know, and I'm not going to date myself too much here, but my father used to tell me that cars that he would work on when he was young, he could damn near sit in the engine compartment. I mean, so you'd have plenty of room to use a tool like this to take advantage of that quick ratcheting action. Perhaps these didn't sell as well as Sears had hoped because they only offered it for a handful of years. But nonetheless, amongst tool collectors, these are much loved. And the price only seems to hike the better the condition is. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we'll just set it like that. There we go. So as far as the mechanisms are concerned. What do we got going on? This is something that I like to touch up on when I do these videos. So you can get a little bit more than this is this, this is that, the end. The long lever ratchets, obviously being the predecessors of the, the butterfly selector ratchets, or flying V if you like to call it that, these were a little weird. While they were the father of these in a way, or maybe the older brother we'll say, of the butterfly selector ratchets. The older brother went through some growing pains as the mechanism philosophy made its small evolutions to get to here. And why do I say that? Well, the long lever ratchets are a little bit anomalous in terms of how the mechanism is set up. As I've mentioned before, in the more contemporary or more recent ratchets that were under, offered under the Craftsman banner, you had same number of teeth for every size, same number of teeth in the pull for every size. So you'd have a consistent ratcheting motion when you're using all the sizes, so there was nothing to, you know, ergonomics for comfort, made life a little bit better for the end user. Is it absolutely essential? Well, that's realistically up to you, but you, you could expect a similar consistency of performance amongst all the sizes. Everything was the same. Now, I was mentioning before, moving backward, that's not necessarily the case. And you started to see that within the third generation, I'm bringing this out to reference it a whole bunch of times, but we're going to reference all of these amongst each other, especially during the teardown, a whole bunch. But this is where you started to see that change in philosophy was at this point right here with the quick release ratchet. Here it's it's a little bit <laughs> a little bit different. So instead of having the largest size having the highest number of teeth and the in the gear in the paw uh, and that certainly is is the case for the larger sizes here but it's not like you had the largest size the half inch having the most of everything and then you move down and then you get the same for three eighths and quarter inch these are odd because the half inch for the long lever, the initial release anyways, had a 40 tooth gear with a two tooth engagement per side pull. And that gave you nine degrees of arc swing, okay? That's a little weird because bringing this guy, the quick release out again, 
and even referencing the butterfly selector, he's only had 32. I would strongly encourage you to watch the teardown video for this specifically because it, it's weird. And I'm going to directly compare the gears and the pulls just so you can see how strange this is. So it's, it's a finer tooth gear, a little unique looking compared to its brothers that came right after it and lasted for the next 30 some odd years. It has the, the pawl is unique too because it's a crescent moon shaped. So underneath this selector, instead of having the bat wings uh, pawl that you've seen in some of the other teardown videos I've done, it's not like that at all. It's a whole other animal. And we'll talk more about that then. So you get 3 eighths and quarter inch. Those two have the same number of teeth for the gear, 24. This paw, also two tooth, quarter inch, <laughs> one tooth. <laughs> Both are crescent moon shaped. So pretty weird. Now, without going into a lot of detail, I would strongly suggest if you want to know even more information about these than what I'll offer in the teardown video. I mean, we're going to discuss some of this when I do like the generation comparisons. I'll talk some more about that. But if you do a Google search on Craftsman Long Lever Lost Ratchet History, do a Google search on that. You'll see that I put up two or I should say, yeah, it's it's two different forums on Garage Journal and Garage Gazette. It's the same exact uh, thread, so you can go to whichever one that you like the most. They both offer awesome resources individually. But I talk more about what's going on with these particular ratchets. There's a bit of a theory that another gentleman and I kind of built up with these because they're just so strange uh, compared to the ones that came after it. So it's it just kind of goes down. It's 40 tooth gear, 2 tooth pawl, crescent moon, 24, 2 tooth pawl, crescent moon, and going down and down. Real, real strange. These, on the other hand, the butterflies, the half inch has 32 tooth gear, Two tooth engagement, the standard bat wing design, gives you about 11 and uh, 11.25 degrees of arc swing for the big guy. Smaller size is 24 tooth. You know, you get the the two tooth paw here, and you get the one for the quarter inch. There, and this is 15 degrees arc swing as well. These ratchets are made of molybdenum steel, as I've said before, so there's really nothing different there with the nickel chrome plating, offers high corrosion, tarnish, and wear resistance. Drop forward to increase strength at points of stress, heat treated, oil quenched, tempered, uniformly prevent interior soft spots. These are part of the super tough steel line. This is just an anecdote, but since I've been collecting these ratchets, I've noticed that these seem to exemplify more wear on the chrome and more wear on the bodies in general. I don't think that, you know, the philosophies of mechanics or do-it-yourselfers or professionals changed much in 10 years where everybody was just a klutz and beating the crap out of their tools. And then suddenly they thought, well, you know, I better take care of this more. <laughs> the, the third generation, it, I, I believe that there must have been a change of metallurgy practice and the chroming because it seems like the chrome, even for this guy, this is 1967, the chrome and the body seem to hold up significantly better. That's just my opinion, though. I've got more examples of banged up ones of these than I do of the 1967 ones. Maybe I'm just lucky, but it, it, that just seems to be the case for me. These are made by Moore Drop Forge. So this is, these are made before 
we move into the East Co era where more Drop Forge was purchased by East Co. So compared to the quick release ratchet that I've been showing a whole bunch of times so far, which actually had a molybdenum selector, these did not have that. So the selector on the third generation was significantly stronger. Why? Because these were stainless steel. And the stainless steel metallurgy of these is... When I, when I studied these, comparing it to, say, for example, the stainless steel ratchet, right? Where I was able to do an analysis on that. It seems as if there's more contaminants in the metal, which I guess it makes sense because I'm going to tell you that these selectors don't hold up very well against abuse. So say for example, this one isn't too bad, but I've got this butterfly selector half inch, right? So you can see there's wear, there's some dings, there's some dents, etc. and so forth. This, this is actually isn't all that bad. Uh, it's not uncommon to find these selectors just marred. These were a little bit better than the long levers. The long levers that I've been able to find are typically banged up pretty bad. So for me to find some of these in intact condition, despite the fact that there is some wear for their age, obviously these are tools and they were meant to be used, uh, it wasn't uncommon to find these selectors completely sheared off. I mean, if you take a look at, say for example, this long lever versus, we're just going to do a quick comparison, versus the third generation quick release, look how high that lever sits versus the ratchet. Look how low the profile of this one is versus that one. This is, this is damn near Olympus Mons, <laughs> the highest mountain in all of our solar system compared to this guy. So why is that important? Well, if you have a, a weak steel, and stainless steel typically isn't all that strong to begin with. It can be, it can be. But if you have a weaker stainless steel alloy, a very high profile selector with a free swinging, non-supported little selector knob here, you're banging in that engine compartment, you're banging around doing your job, Pachook! that's gonna go bye-bye. And as you can see here, with this 3 8 we've got some bending action. Wah, wah, wah. It's having some lever dysfunction. <laughs> it's a little floppier than it used to be in its heyday. But yeah, the selector chroming, typically what I found with these is eroded fairly easily. It's difficult to find good examples of these. Again, these are the best ones that I could find. I'm sure that there's extraneous outliners that are in impeccable condition, but you get the point. Let's just go ahead and talk about some of the physical differences between these two sets. So, let's grab the half inches. So besides the I-beam design, we'll take a look here. You'll see that the Craftsman badge is a little bit more rounded than it is here on the Butterfly Selector. Usually the little I-beam or the little tier here within the I-beam is a little bit deeper. Let's zoom in quite a bit. So these ratchets all sport the oil port, although they don't say oil port as was demonstrated on the third generation raised panel ratchets or the quick release you'll see that access seemed to significantly improve and if you read my thread about this you'll see that you've got the, the selector housing seating right there so pretty fairly easy Retention clip access to do maintenance on the pawl and the selector. Whereas on this guy, the long lever, look at that. 
I mean, yeah, you get some protection here, but <laughs> it's very difficult to access, especially with the lever right in the way. Also typical for the long lever, you'll see that long levers, the gear is typically chromed, and so is the Paul within. They usually leave the snap ring is chromed as well, whereas on the butterfly selectors, they usually have a it's raw metal or whatever coating that they put on here. It's also indicative of a long lever is this this apex here, right at the bottom. If you were physically with me and you could examine this, there's less access room here than here. So it's more difficult to do the maintenance on the selectors and pawls as well as the gear. And they seem to make incremental improvements on the design as time went on to, to remedy that. So. <laughs> You'll also notice that if you were here with me that this, uh, hopefully you can notice it, but as far as the machining of the head here, it's a lot more rounded than even the butterfly selector. And then once we move from the butterfly selector to the quick release, the head is even less so. They don't even bother to try to do any kind of ornamental machining or anything like that. So it's a cost saving measure. And if you read my thread, I discussed that in length. I may mention that in the, the teardown just to kind of clarify some things, but... So the long levers were typically shown in tool sets that you could buy until 1962. So despite the fact that they weren't offered post-1958 for individual sale, you could still get them in sets. And post-1962 in the same tool sets, the flying V's slash butterfly selectors were depicted in their place. You could not individually buy the long lever after the aforementioned time frame. These ratchets, both of them, were the first standard iteration of the I-beam style neck that was used from this point up until the very last Craftsman standard ratchet, what I've called the fourth generation teardrop ratchet, that I-beam design went from 1957 all the way to the bitter end of the USA produced ratchet in 2011. And it was also the beginning of the ubiquitous Batwing Paul design. Like I've said before, the Flying V speeders are considered valuable and collectible. They're difficult to find in good shape. Usually the body, the selectors damage, the spinner handle becomes discolored, becomes dirty, the sunlight hits it. So it's difficult to find one that's blue. So if you're buying one of these and you're going to pay high dollar for it, I'm very grateful that one was donated to me. It's going to be a midnight blue color. The Flying V Selector has its own individual patent for its design. And it also made its appearance in the micro adjusting torque wrench in 1966, which I don't have. As I mentioned within the expectations video series at the very, very beginning of this whole video set, I mentioned that if I was going to do the torque wrenches, I would do them in their own individual video. Uh, the Butterfly Selector, the Quick Release, those had ex essentially the same exact design in terms of the torque wrench. The Flying V slash Butterfly Selector torque wrench is really tough to find. So, again, I may or may not do the torque wrenches, but at least you know that a torque wrench was available for these or Butterfly Selector and Quick Release Ratchets. The first iterations of the long levers were very different from Gen 1 
and the raised panel ratchets afterwards. As I mentioned, it had a, a crescent moon versus the bat wing. So, pretty, pretty oddball. Regrettably, I don't have any uh, repair kits for these. So far as I know, and again, if you know any better, please let me know because it would it would be very very helpful for me for my own personal knowledge and for what I can share with the community but I have been unable to find any kind of repair kits for the long lever ratchets at all I don't know if they existed I couldn't find any kind of information that would allude to the fact that they do exist as far as the flying V slash butterfly ratchets are concerned there were repair kits for them I did attempt to buy one off of eBay and I was quickly defeated. <laughs> I think I put a bid for like 10 bucks and it went to damn near $60. I, I think that at this point in the video series we understand what, what a repair kit is and what it can look like, but uh, courtesy of an individual from garagejournal.com. Uh, a user named Jake Mack. Thank you very much, Jake. I'm happy to throw the shout out for you and, and offer my thanks. He went ahead and offered me some sheets, some scans from a repair kit that was offered very, very late in the game in terms of the Butterfly Selector's product cycle, just to kind of show you what it would have looked like and what it would have included. So, just going ahead and taking a look at the top here, we don't have a quick release so the gear doesn't have it. Nothing new with the retention plate or the retention ring. We've got the bat wing pawl, different sizes of springs depending on what we have going on. And this, as I, I hope I mentioned in the quick release video, I might not have and I apologize for this, but that low profile or that really small profile selector has a name and Sears called it the low profile selector I almost wonder if the long or the the long lever shouldn't be called the high profile selector because I think amongst the community that probably would be a little bit of a better name for it because people get confused in general and when you start talking about the selectors what exactly you're talking about but yeah Sears officially called the the flying V the butterfly and this particular kit had the butterfly and the low profile selector and I think it even included the, the hourglass selector. Take a look at this. So this is important. As I alluded to in the quick release video, take a look. So we've got butterfly selector ratchet and we have what appears to be a quick release. Looks exactly like it with a different selector area housing and it doesn't have the quick release. This is that one ratchet that I was alluding to before that in the quick release video at the very end that was important. It's probably the rarest family including this guy here. This is another example of Craftsman ratchets post World War II. I'm not talking about individual ratchets, I'm talking about the entire family from half inch three eighths flexes, quarter inch three eighths, half inch standard sizes, all the way including a 15 inch half inch drive breaker bar ratchet. This particular ratchet family had everything, so we'll get to that. I, I have them all, they were hard as hell to get, but I'm intentionally delaying doing that video. So this is just the diagram of how you do the disassembly and reassembly and regrettably that's the <laughs> cutoff on the page. I've got some, as I always do, some patents to share. I couldn't find anything for the long lever, but I've got the patent for the selector. This is patent DS. 185651 and this is the patent for that appeared in July 7th 1959 or I should say it was patented so these were made to showcase the flying V slash butterfly selector 
for these ratchets. Pretty cool. And I actually have another patent. This is an, also from the same Robert Voss or Vos. Same gentleman working for more Drop Forge in Springfield, Massachusetts for a different iteration for the selector. So I, I'm curious to know if they decided that they might want to do this. This was in September uh, 22nd, 1959. If they wanted to explore possible different idea with the selector strictly because what can happen with some of these ratchets sometimes is, let me grab this 3 eighths here, is here's a pretty common example. So the selector surprisingly is in excellent condition, just some of the chromas come off. So selector's great condition. You can see some wear marks from the tips of these ratchets digging into as you push down you might grind against the ratchet face a little bit but it wasn't uncommon for these to uh, uh, I guess overextend a little bit and you could thunk, nip the tips off of these so I've got a whole slew of these different grades of condition overall different results in terms of how they've held up but perhaps that was an idea that they wanted to go ahead and do that that oddball ratchet uh, selector patent I have is DES 186189 if you want to check it out real brief patch of this patent this is all it is is one page just like the, the butterfly selector let's go ahead and take a look at some pages straight out of the catalog these are for the Butterfly Selectors, 1959. And you only were offered the same standard sizes, along with the 3 8 flex, which was brand new for the Craftsman product line. Part of the Super Tough Steel line. That's all you got. 1959, just the standard three sizes with the flex. Let's do long lever. So here's what we got 1957. I haven't forgotten about this ratchet. We're going to do that with generation one. So don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the three, three quarter inch. Here's another really cool ratchet we're going to do. It doesn't look like one, but it is. And regrettably, let's see here, that was product S. So that'll be right there. You might be hearing some sounds from my wife's movie downstairs. So yeah, that's all you got. So, my my take on these ratchets is I, I think they're very beautiful overall. I mean, who can who can deny the butterfly selector? I mean, it's it's I think it's pretty. Uh, the long levers I think that uh, they can leave a little bit to be desired in terms of their uh, selector composition. I, I think that it was a little bit junky, and I can kind of see why they decided for Sears to save some money and for more Drop Forge to have keep their contract with. With Sears, they kind of needed to come up with a, a solution to prevent warranty exchanges because, I mean, these things just were getting their butts kicked. I mean, and another criticism that I have actually about both of these sets, in fact, is that until Gen 3 came along and started having better access in terms of its selector area and the gear area if you've worked on these at all you'll notice that obviously getting access to do maintenance on either of these areas is really tough so I think that the reason why more drop forge went to these so quickly in a nutshell was to save you know there were some cosmetic things that they did to make these a little bit prettier but it ultimately made them more expensive and harder to access so they needed a solution for that and that's why this evolution happened it's the same exact well, I should say same exact but a very 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 similar take on the mechanism design 
they made the improvements on that because I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, doing maintenance on these, even when you've got, assuming that you got all the springs off, you know, the retention clips off, it's, it's tough. The crescent moon shaped pull is difficult to, to reinsert properly without a trick, which I'll show you. And so naturally the long lever evolving into the butterfly selector variant made the most sense for Sears and for more drop forage in terms of cost effectiveness, in terms of maintenance, in terms of user and user satisfaction. So these are the long lever and butterfly selector also known as the flying V's. I hope you enjoyed these, uh, these ratchets. These are pretty cool. Despite some of their shortcomings, still really neat. So that about wraps it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to have some more to come. Just in brief, I'm going to take about 30 seconds here. Uh, I, some people have been expressing their concerns, thinking that I forgot about the round head fine tooth ratchet set. Haven't forgotten about it at all. I'm actually missing the half inch flex at the moment. So I'm hoping that either somebody will donate that to me, loan it to me, or or what. But uh, I'm missing that one and I didn't want to do the video until I actually had that. And uh, I also didn't do the, the hybrid or intermediate ratchet set that I mentioned before, those super rare ones, or go into that. So it... I am skipping around a little bit, but I'm doing that on purpose because I want to be fully prepared for those. All the research is done, all the ratchets are done, but I just want to make sure that uh, that I do them their due diligence. So, in case if you were wondering. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.